I'm not a big fan of Apple, but I do like some of their designs, such as the Cylindric Mac Pro introduced a few years back. In this video, I'll show you how to make something somewhat similar. As always, I sketched a 3D model in SketchUp to get an idea of how the components should be laid out. And no, I didn't model each and every hardware part, I downloaded this from the warehouse. I came up with a frame design, with the motherboard and the Plex HD power supply attached on one side, the GPU on the other, connected using a PCI Express riser cable, and the fan on the bottom, forcing the hot air out. To make the case, I used a 1 meter long, square aluminum profile, a few scraps of angle and flat bars, a 20 cm diameter sewer pipe, a handful of rivets, screws and threaded inserts, some carbon fiber imitating vinyl and a piece of plastic mesh for the top cover. The total cost of the parts came in at around $20. I started from making the frame. I took the square aluminum profile and made two 90 degrees bands. You know the drill, make two cuts with a hock saw and then gently apply force to shape the material. I would have braced the aluminum, but I didn't have time to learn it just yet. Maybe next time. After bending the frame, I cut the rest off and proceeded with making supports using angle bars 4x2cm. I cut two 12cm pieces and attached both to the frame using two rivets for each. Then I laid the frame flat and laid all the components onto it. I marked three motherboard mounting points and Plex HD power supply positioning. Since the motherboard was raised a little bit above the frame, I had to make a mounting point for one of the screws. A short piece of small 15 by 15 mm angle bar attached to the frame with two rivets was exactly what I needed. Next, I move on to sorting out power supply mounting. I cut a piece of 15 by 10 mm angle bar and another one the same length but flat. Running across the frame, they would provide more than enough support for the Plex HD power supply and strengthen the entire contraption at the same time. I attached both to the frame using rivets. Then I fixed a set of four threaded inserts for the motherboard mounting points and four more for the power supply. After that, I drilled two holes in one of the bottom profiles to attach a 12cm fan. The frame was actually designed for a 14cm fan, but I didn't have one lying around and hence the sketchy mounting with just two screws. But remember what I said the last time, I'm just prototyping for my and for your entertainment. Next in line was the GPU. I took the trusted GTX 1050 by Zotac, connected it using the riser cable and put it on the other side of the frame to figure out where it should go. I know that with the fans facing the motherboard, the cooling wouldn't be the most efficient, but the riser wasn't long enough to position the video card with the heatsink oriented the other way. After establishing the mounting point, I cut a piece of angle bar, the same I used for the bottom supports, and extracted a piece to make it flat at one end. I drilled a hole for an M3 screw and attached the bracket to the frame using two rivets. Then I established mounting points for the SSD. I'm using a small 120 gigs SSD that I got from my good friends at Blitzwolf. I don't really need anything more for a boot drive as the rest of the storage I need comes in the form of iSCSI targets hosted on my Synology NAS that it's loaded with two 10 whooping terabytes Seagate Iron Wolf hard drives. The SSD placement isn't the most fortunate as it blocks a little of the GPU cooling but I couldn't think of a different location. Next. I cut a piece of 30mm wide flat bar for the power connector lead and fix it to the frame right next to the GPU mounting bracket. I established location for the mounting and power connector points and drill the holes. Then I drill a hole on both sides of the frame and fix an insert in each. This is where the other part will connect to the frame. With the frame complete, I proceeded with attaching everything onto it, starting from the motherboard then the HD Plex power supply. Next, I connected the riser cable, routed between the motherboard and the frame, then the Blitzwolf SSD and the Zotac GTX 1050. Last but not least was the power supply connector. With everything in place, I proceeded with connecting all the cables. After a fair bit of wire management, 
I was ready to move on to fabricating the outer shell. First, I connected all the cables to determine the height of the shell. Then I moved the cat from my workbench and marked the measured length all around the pipe. Using masking tape, I established a straight line and patiently cut the plastic with Dremel. Then I smoothed the edge using file and marked the placement of the opening for the cables. Next, I marked position of the mounting holes on each side and proceeded with drilling. I used the spade bit to make a large opening for the cords, which wasn't actually all that easy given the round shape of the pipe. I smoothed the opening using Dremel. I fixed a set of four supports for the top cover and moved on to making the pipe presentable. I cut a sheet of the carbon fiber vinyl and carefully applied it to the plastic pipe. I used my wife's hair dryer to heat up the vinyl so it was easier to wrap around the edges. Then I spray painted the inside black and moved on to fabricating the top cover. I used the most of the mesh material before for my audio gear cabinet so I didn't have a piece large enough to cover the entire diameter. I could have ordered a new mesh but it would have taken at least two days for it to get delivered so I decided to make something of what I currently had. I cut a piece of U-shaped aluminum bar and cut two similar length pieces of the plastic mesh that would attach to it. I cleaned the edges so the surface makes good contact with the aluminum. Next, I covered the aluminum in fake carbon fiber and glued both pieces of the plastic mesh to it. Then, I made the template, transferred the outline onto the cover and cut the plastic using Dremel. Then, I put the outer shell onto the frame, connected power and HDMI cables, network cord and USB hub connector, put the cover on and the build was complete. The case is 33 cm high and it measures 20 cm in diameter, which makes it a bit larger than the Mac Pro. I could have easily made it 4 to 5 cm lower if I rotated the motherboard and the GPU 90 degrees and make a large cutout for the cables. But in such scenario, the case couldn't accept a larger video card. I could also make some ventilation cutouts here and there and ditch the bottom fan and shave off additional 2-3 cm. The case is raised off the desk a little as the frame sits on a set of rubber feet so the fan has some air to breathe but I know it's far from ideal. With the cover on, the CPU idles at around 33 degrees and the temperature rises to a toasty 80 degrees under full load while the GPU reaches 74 degrees after running Valley Benchmark for 30 minutes. For reference, without a cover, the CPU idles at 26 hits 61 degrees when running Prime95 and the GPU temperature gets to 62 degrees running Valley Benchmark. The whole computer is far from sounding like a jet under full load, but it isn't exactly silent when idling either. I'm really satisfied with how this build turned out. I guess I could do better with the power button as it currently is hidden inside the case, but since I won't be using this computer, I don't mind it being there. For USB connectivity, a Blitzwolf hub sorts out the problem of the lack of easily accessible USB connectors, but I believe I could come up with a connector on a side or something if I was to use this case on a daily basis. Well, that's all in this one. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.